Hey, Jack Leg, do you want a rifle that's like the AR-15? But you want a rifle that's as awesome as the AK? Super. Then what you need is the IWI Carmel. It's kind of scary, but it's brand new on the market. We're going to be talking about this in this video. I'll let you guys know what I think about it, the things I like, the things I don't like, and whether or not it's going to be around to stay coming up. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we are gonna be talking about the IWI Carmel and it's kind of impact or maybe not impact in the gun industry. We're gonna get into all of that high 50,000 foot overview of the rifle, a little bit of its background and talk about the things that I like and some things that we probably need to see some upgrades in a Gen 2 later on down in the line. Okay, so my question to you guys right off the bat is what is your favorite rifle? Are you an AR guy? Are you an AK guy? Do you like some of the off the wall type stuff like the G36 or you know a VZ58 or SCARS, ACRs, let me know. Sound off in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would greatly appreciate you guys considering doing that. That's a great way to cuck the YouTube overlords and to help the algorithm to spread this message far and wide. In addition to that, any type of interaction on this video, comments, likes, shares is greatly appreciated as well. Okay, so let's talk about it. Here is the IWI Carmel, and let me tell you, this is actually a really, really interesting rifle. Um, like I said, there's some ups and some downs, and uh, there's an area I think that fits this very, very well, but uh, let's get into a overview of what's going on with this. This is going to be IWI's developmental gun for government contracts. They started this way back in 2014. And uh, since that time, they haven't really gone anywhere with it. Uh, its original uh, iteration had a couple of different uh, features to it, but this is the way they have it set up for the US market. Now, you're gonna see a lot of things that are set up in such a way specifically because IWI teamed up with industry people from the US to say, okay, we want this, we don't want that, so on and so forth. And we'll get into touching some of the eaches on that as we go. Originally, this was chambered in 762 by 39, and then they moved to 556 again for the American market. If you guys are interested, uh, Military Arms Channel's got a video talking about uh, a deep dive into the background of this. You can check that out if you want, or if you don't, that's fine too. Okay, so this is going to be a 16 inch, one and seven twist, cold hammer forged pencil barrel. Uh, they did that because the weight on this is already at like eight pounds as it stands right now. So having like a military profile barrel would just add that much more weight. Now it is eight pounds, but I can tell you that it doesn't seem like it's eight pounds. Yeah, it's it's bulky, it's thick with two C's and uh, you know, it's, it is a little heavy. You can tell it's heavier than a standard AR, but at the end of the day, it doesn't seem like it's overly heavy as well. And we'll talk about how that translates here in just a second. Now, on here, I have a dead air um, chemo flash hider, uh, and this is something I really, really did like about how IWI set this up. The flash hider has a, uh, a nut here that forces it against the barrel. So you don't have to worry about cr crush washers or anything like that. The installation of this flash hider took all of like, oh man, like 30, 45 seconds. Uh, I think it took us longer to get the old one off than put the new one on. So uh, that's pretty cool. I wanna say a huge thank you to two people on getting this rifle in my hands. Number one, over on Instagram, you've got AK Quality Enforcement. If you haven't followed him, check him out. He is who got this in my hands and I greatly appreciate his support of the channel and everything he's doing for not only 
uh, the gun industry, but AKs as well. In addition to that, American Cash Exchange uh, was transferred, uh, this rifle was transferred through my local shop, American Cash Exchange, so I wanna say a huge thank you to them as well because they're awesome and I love those guys. So, all right, so let's get back into it. So moving back, you're going to have an adjustable gas block. This has two settings. You have regular and then suppressed. The original had three gas settings, which was regular, suppressed, and off. And IWI finally was just like, you know, we don't really need off. So we're just gonna get rid of that and just keep the two. And I think that is perfectly fine. There's really no need for you to uh, run a different gas, dish, gas selection unless you're going to change that port size to uh, allow it to run uh, adverse conditions or run some other ammunitions that um, might be a little bit finicky. So just keep that in mind. Moving back, the handguard is set in on these two screws right here. It is M-lock and uh, it's going to have a lot of space for you to put lights or IR lasers or whatever you want to put on there. Um, the interesting thing about uh, this is that they changed it to be more of a blocky design than their original concept that had a big slope in the front. That'll allow you to put some type of IR emitter way out at the end. Uh, so uh, that would really, really help um, maintain zero for a infrared laser or something like that. So that's something I really, really did like. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the controls. The controls are ambidextrous and a lot of people are like, oh, it's fully ambidextrous. And yeah, but no, uh, it is fully ambidextrous because your um, bolt catch, bolt release and uh, your magazine release are all going to be on both sides. You're gonna have a truncated uh, safety lever here on the right side for you know one-handed manipulations or um, non-dominant hand manipulations or if you're left-handed you can use that as well uh, but you can't switch the ejection port from one side to the other so that's where i'm like eh, it's not really fully ambidextrous like the uh, x95 is you can switch the ejection port from one side to the other so uh, i'm kind of surprised they didn't do that but it is what it is so whatever but the one interesting thing that i really do like is you can switch the charging handle that's non-reciprocating. You can switch that. You just put it into this little groove right here and then push it right on over and boom. You can do AK style if you like to do it that way. So that's something that I thought was really cool. No tools are needed to switch that back and forth. So um, yeah, it's pretty nice. Moving back to the buttstock, very SCAR-esque. You're going to have a lot of adjustments on here so you can move this uh, back and forth. It's telescoping, it's got six positions. You can move the um, cheek riser up and down if you want to. So that's pretty nice as well. I gotta get it back to my original position. There we go. Put it one um, level up so I can run this LPVO that I have here. This is the one to 10, the SLX one to 10 from Primary Arms um, with the Griffin reticle. And I really, really do like this one. Comes with the throw lever. It's about everything that you need for a 5.56. Five, uh, I'm going to do a video on this scope in particular and comparing it to the ACSS Raptor reticle as well. One of the things that they changed from the original design is they went away from their proprietary uh, pistol grip and uh, allowed it to accept the AR-15 style pistol grips, so you can choose whatever style grip that you want. This comes with the B5 Systems pistol grip, and I actually kind of like it. I like the texture of it. It doesn't have that little nub like an A2. The grip angle is uh, pretty shallow, the way that I like it, very much like Magpul K2. So I really do like the way that they got that set up. Uh, let's talk about the trigger. Trigger on this is, Interesting to say the least. First and foremost, that it is going to be a proprietary trigger, so you're not going to be able to use any type of like cassette triggers or Geisley triggers or anything like that. In addition to it, it is very similar to an AK trigger. 
but better, which is weird. So I don't know. It's uh, you 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 get the uh, take up like an AR trigger, and then it hits a wall, and then it has this weird like rolling break, but it's a lot more crisp and quicker than an AK. So you got your take up, and then here's your break, roll, 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 break over, and then here's your reset. Goes pretty far, and then break again. So interesting trigger. I didn't necessarily like it, but I didn't mind it, if that makes any sense. I didn't, it's just like, it's, it's pretty milk toast. It, there's really nothing to say or write home about. It is what it is. So um, hopefully, we will be able to see some aftermarket triggers come out to uh, kind of clean that trigger up a little bit. Uh, but at the end of the day, not that big of a deal. I did put it onto my Wheeler gauge and was getting consistent five pound readings on this. So, um, you know, pretty mill specky weight, I guess, if you want to go that route. So there is that. All right, so let's talk about the things I really do like about this. First and foremost, with the factory adjustable gas block, this is a great suppressor host. In addition to that, because it's a short stroke gas piston system, there is no gas blowback in your face. Or if there is, it's so minuscule that you don't even notice it. Uh, the first 200 rounds that I have through this, it's actually, I've got it up to about 250 rounds now uh, with the one range trip plus the, uh, I don't know, two magazines that the original owner uh, put through this. Um, it is got about 250 rounds through it. So I didn't notice anything. The one range session that I've been out that I've dumped a whole bunch of rounds through, um, it wasn't very windy. So if there was going to be any type of gas in my face, then uh, I would have known about it. Unlike an AR, even with upgraded uh, charging handles like the uh, Geisley supercharging handle or the uh, um, Viridian Raptor or any of those, uh, you, you have these ledges that are supposed to deflect gas out of your face, but you're still going to feel some of that gas in your face, even with some AKs as well. So that's, this is something I really, really did like about it. Uh, ease of use on this adjustable gas block is super, super easy. Just take a, a round and you can turn it back and forth. Um, like I already mentioned, I really liked how they set up the muzzle device so that it's easy to change to exactly what you want. Uh, operation of this is really, really good. Uh, no, no problems. And the balance on this. Um, I was able to put a couple of rounds on target back to back really, really quick or quick to me anyway, and was surprised when I hit two rounds on target. I'm like, oh, Oh, okay, and it shot super, super flat. So uh, very, very happy with the performance on this. Now, the things that I don't necessarily like about it is the fact that uh, number one, it's pretty bulky. Uh, it's bulky, it's a little heavy. Uh, so if you're not used to running something like this, uh, if you're not used to running like a milled AK, like a SAM-7, then you're not going to like this at all uh, because this is going to be a lot heavier than the AR-15 and it's going to be bulkier. Height over bore on this is like, you might as, be, might as well be running like a, you know, ultra high riser. <laughs> it's like, like from Unity Tactical and an EOTech on top of that, uh, like my AR-15 night vision setup. But with that uh, being said, you get used to it. The other thing is I haven't noticed it because I haven't run this with a pistol yet, but in transition drills, I've seen a couple of people talk about how this kind of gets in the way. It's pretty bulky and this buttstock here kind of hangs out here. So when you're transitioning, you get kind of hung up in this really aggressive angle on the buttstock. So uh, we'll check that out when we run it for, um, you know, some drills out on the range and put more rounds through this. I am going to be working on a 1000 round review, hopefully as quickly as I possibly can to get you guys some more information. But I don't expect there to be anything to come out of this other than it ran great. So we'll see how that goes. The other thing that 
The other thing that I didn't like about this was the magazine situation. Uh, you put it in and you really got to be intentional when it comes to inserting that magazine. Naturally, okay, yeah, you should be in intentional when you insert a magazine, but even if it's not empty, if it's not completely full, this is not full, this rent, this magazine's not 100% full, and I still have to really force it in there to, to uh, get it to load. So just keep that in mind when uh, you pick one of these up. The other thing that I didn't really care for is the fact that this um, safety lever feels really cheap. It's obviously polymer, but it, it kind of moves around in, uh, in its, in its hole, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, the detent on it is really nice and you can get in there with your hand really well and get it flipped back and forth, but there's so much wiggle on this safety lever that it just seems like it was an afterthought, you know, and they're like, oh, we got to put a safety lever in. And they just found the cheapest thing that they had and threw it in there. So I'd like to see them improve that as well. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is the accuracy. Uh, I first started with M193. I zeroed the optic and then put five rounds on paper to see what the accuracy is. And we're looking, I would say probably about, uh, eh, we'll call it, um, two inches, we'll call it a two inch group. There's one flyer in there. Had it not been a flyer, we probably would have seen closer to one and a half to one and a quarter, but it is what it is. From there, we uh, tried American Whitetail 60 grain, and that ended up being a group that is pushing four inches. Uh, it's about three and, three and three quarter inches. Had one flyer. I went ahead and counted it anyway, but um, it is what it is. And uh, I can't say that it liked it, disliked it, but it is what it is. From there, we tried uh, Deer Season XP, and that is a 64 grain um, uh, polymer tip projectile. And again, we're seeing uh, results very similar to the 60 grain that we just shot. After that, we tried the uh, 68 grain Frontier 556 Hornady Boat Tail Hollow Point, and uh, that one, man, that one, that one was really bad. We're pushing uh, well over three inches on that, and um, it, it just—I I don't know—it just didn't like it at all. And then from there, we jumped in and uh, shot. Frontier 556 with the Hornady 75 grain boat tail hollow point, and that ended up being, um, we'll call it uh, with the flyer, we'll call it um, one and three quarter inch uh, on there, so close to two. So, realistically, at the end of the day, we're going to say that uh, this rifle is fighting rifle, as it were. So, uh, don't expect to have rounds on top of each other. The accuracy actually may improve the more rounds that I get through it and kind of foul out the barrel a little bit. But at the end of the day, this is going to be uh, well above what the DOD standard is for accuracy on a fighting rifle, which is 4 MOA. So, uh, not too bad. Now, where do I see this rifle as it stands right now? Um, this is this is realistically the uh, Scar 16 at home. Uh, if you're not wanting to spend two to three thousand dollars on a Scar, uh, if you can find an ACR and you you found one that runs, um, you're going to spend a couple thousand to three thousand, four thousand dollars on one of those as well. Um, this is a very uh, inexpensive viable option. We're looking somewhere around that sixteen to seventeen hundred dollar mark on today's market. So this is probably one of the better options for a short stroke gas piston system that is not an AR and um, is kind of scar e looking. Do I think that this is going to overtake the market for AR-15s as far, as far as like high quality AR-15s? No, I don't think so either. Um, but it, it's, it's something that's 
nice for collectors. So if you like to collect firearms, this would be a great option for you right there. All right, so there you have it. There is my initial impression of the IWI Masada. I'm kind of on the fence on whether or not I like it. Uh, I think it has some really great attributes. I do believe that if you're looking for a suppressor host, this would be a great option. Uh, I would like to see maybe like a 14.5 uh, inch barreled version or maybe even a 12.5 barreled version of this uh, in the future. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, be able to get some updates on the trigger. That would be pretty cool as well. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking things out. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys are watching my videos and I appreciate all the comments down below. I see and read every single one of those. Am I caught up on responding to all of them? No, but I'm trying my best and I really do appreciate you guys' support. If you guys are interested in financially supporting the channel, there's a great way that you can do that by becoming a member. I have some behind the scenes content that no one else is going to be able to see unless you guys sign up. It's a great way to um, help support the channel if you guys want to do that. And, uh, you know, YouTube takes their cut, but at the end of the day, uh, that money ends up going to buy ammo to fund these projects. So I really do appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so very much. We will catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.